All right, so we're actually well on the way uh, in terms of looking at how enolates react with uh, carbonyl compounds, particularly the aldehydes and the, the aldol reaction. Uh, what I want to do now is I want to, us to look at just a, an example of, uh, it's a named reaction, and it's called the, the Manic reaction. Now, <clears throat> the Manic reaction, it's a separate eye there, um, the Manic reaction is uh, essentially similar, but what we're looking at is not uh, the reaction of a aldehyde, but rather uh, an iminium species that is generated in situ. Now, remember, uh, this is effectively the nitrogen analog of, of an aldehyde, uh, and it can, the iminium can act as an e electrophile. So, uh, uh, and we've seen some examples of that already. So, if we were to make something like this and react it with an enolate, we can get uh, some new carbon-carbon bonds uh, being formed. And the overall uh, reaction, or the way it looks, is that we would uh, add, for instance, let's just take the cyclo hexanone, if we got that one to react under, we need some sort of catalysis to get the uh, the enolate or the enol to form as, as quickly as possible. So let's just use acid catalysis. Uh, the product would look uh, like this. We're putting on a new carbon, carbon with a nitrogen and uh, the two methyl groups. Right, now if you can't see that straight away, uh, don't worry about it because we'll follow through with the mechanism. Uh, but there's some more information I need to, to give to you and that is that this iminium itself, all right, we don't just have this lying around and it's actually generated in situ in the same ways that you would normally generate um, iminiums uh, and that is that this double bond over here if we think backwards from that actually comes from the most simplest of aldehydes formaldehyde so let's just write both of the H's in uh, plus a secondary amine in this case dimethylamine so we condense those two together uh, we will get this iminium, which can then react with this enolate. Now, the method to get those two to condense together is to add in a, a catalytic amount of acid. So if we add that plus this, plus a catalytic amount of acid, we're going to get this, which in the presence of the catalytic amount of acid is going to react with this uh, ketone over here. So actually we can do all of this in one pot, and this is why it's a powerful method, uh, because we get this uh, brand new product over here, lots of extra carbon bonds, uh, and we've done it uh, in a very sort of mild fashion. So let's just quickly look at the, the mechanism. I want us to follow through on this because the, the same principles follow with this reaction as they do with uh, all these types of reactions. So um, you should be able to see how this happens. So it's under acid catalyst, so we don't want to have minus charges anyway. So formaldehyde, although very reactive, let's just start by uh, protonating it. So we're going to put the uh, proton on like that. Uh, and at the same time, our nitrogen, right, which has a proton on, lone pairs of electrons can attack the aldehyde and we are going to get, remember this is an equilibrium that's being set up, uh, we'll get a product that looks something like this. Remember we still got that H on the nitrogen, so it's now positively charged. There's the O and there's the H that we've just connected to. And the two H's over here, if you don't see other ones over there. All right, so we can then push forward towards the uh, iminium intermediate. Uh, we want to do a proton transfer. Okay, we write proton transfer, but we know what's happening is actually this proton is being given off to the solution, uh, and another proton from somewhere else is being uh, picked up uh, by the oxygen lone pairs. Again, this is an equilibrium. We're just pushing forward towards our uh, product that we want to get to. So now we have an OH2 plus <clears throat> like this. We've made this into a good leaving group. Nitrogen lone pair can now kick in to kick out our water leaving group like that. So again, equilibrium gives us the iminium intermediate, positively charged. At the same time, we, under acid conditions, we get our ketone, all right, will go to, by equilibration, it's not equilibration, but tautomerization, um, we end up as the, in the enol form. The enol is now our nucleophile. Remember, in terms of the equilibrium, 
not much of this is being formed, right? Equilibrium is lying towards the left-hand side, but we have enough of this. As, it's, uh, as it is formed, it's now a good nucleophile. We've got a great electrophile over there, and so these can react. It kicks in. I've drawn it far away, but they can react, and we have that. So, again, uh, equilibrium, dot, dot, uh, H plus, new bond, new bond to nitrogen, and the two methyl groups over there. Okay. Uh, and in the last step, of course, we can lose the proton uh, to, to the solution. So um, this is the general scheme of a manic reaction. Uh, all these things are obviously in equilibrium, but this is just uh, fairly stable, so the equilibrium then drives itself to uh, the product formation. And often these reactions are just done at room temperature in an alcoholic solvent uh, and uh, they're, they're, they're fairly uh, benign. Um, <clears throat> so do uh, look at this and make sure that you can do these. This is a wonderful question for arrow pushing and so you know this could come up in a test or an exam just for you know making sure that you understand uh, how arrows are pushed and making sure that you you know under acid conditions we're not uh, having any negative charges floating around just positive charges. All right, so uh, what I want to uh, now just get you to think about is um, that sometimes um, the reactions that we've been doing where an enolate is reacting with a ketone or an aldehyde, um, we've mostly done the aldehydes because we said they're very reactive, but the ketones uh, can also uh, react, but they tend to react, we rather tend to do the reactions on ketones when it's um, an intramolecular reaction. So um, let me just give this as an example. Um, this is a classic sort of structure. If you had to look at this compound over here, um, and using what we, we know already, that we, we did this um, uh, 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 today in the lecture, and I want you to do this now, is think, if you think about the disconnection uh, of of this molecule, how we would want to disconnect it, what bonds would we want to form in the reaction. Hopefully you very quickly recognize that this double bond that is on the alpha beta next door to a carbonyl can easily be formed via an old old type of reaction. Um, and so if we had to think this backwards, we could imagine that a molecule that would look like this, just exaggerating a little bit, a molecule that would look like that, we could generate a negative charge over here, enolate formation, which can close in, and um, on the initial aldol condensation, we can then eliminate uh, water that's being formed, and we'd get this um, over here. So thinking backwards, this is actually just an aldol uh, condensation. What I want you to think about is that this reaction I'm willing to bet at this stage, if I just say, what would you use in order to go from here to here, um, you would say LDA minus 78 and THF. You want to use a strong base because you say, I want to form the kinetic enolate, which is over there, and not the thermodynamic one, which is over there. What I want you to think about is why is that overkill? Why does this reaction work perfectly well? And a very high yield if in the forward sense we just use something like sodium ethoxide. All right, so that's what I want you to think about and we're going to discuss that in the, the next lecture.